Strangeland é o quinto disco dos Kim e o quinto a entrar para o número 1 um no top de vendas em terras de sua majestade, um feito ao alcance de muito poucas bandas. Os Kim apresentam em Portugal um novíssimo disco poucas semanas depois de ter saído e o Top Mais teve a conversa com o vocalista Tom Chaplin. Like My recollections of Portugal are, are obviously all great because actually our records have always done incredibly well here and we've always had a a lot of support right from the first time we came here, which I think was probably 2004, I think. So we've always had a great time. The weather's always pretty much always perfect. So it's nice for English people to fly into this. It's only a few hours away. Um, Cat fans are very passionate, you know. You have a brand new album, so how, how, how is it to have a, a, such a brand new stuff and already been playing? Are you tired already of, of uh, talking about it? <laughs> Well, I found myself going around in circles yesterday. Um, we had quite a few interviews, and I got to that point where I didn't know whether I was answering a question from the interview before or whether I was in the future or the past. It can get confusing, but other than that, it's all great. We have nothing to complain about. You know, we've been releasing records now for eight years, which I think for bands in the past may not seem like an old, a long time, but nowadays it's quite a long time actually to be out there and making records, and so to still feel like we're kind of relevant and people want to listen to our music is a is a fantastic feeling. So we just feel very lucky each time, you know, there are people such as yourself wanting to interview me and um, people are still intrigued by what we're coming up with next and, and what the new album holds. And once again you hit the number one of the UK chart. You you you, you are near some records of uh, real good and old bands like ABBA, Zeppelin. You're you're entering a um, secret area let's <laughs> talk. How do you look at it? Well, I'm sure there are some people who wish we weren't treading in such a sacred area. I think people, you know, they, they, they're completely disinterested in Keen, or they completely fall in love. I think we're a band that polarizes opinion um, in terms of, you know, five number one albums in the UK. It's just astonishing, you know, I think we're, we're all very kind of perplexed and confused by the whole thing. I, I, and I remember before we got a record deal, I think, we had a, an independent single out for a very cool little record label, and um, we were kind of the darlings of the music press for, for about three months. <laughs> and then we got a record deal, and we put this put hopes and fears out, and suddenly, you know, those magazines and um, publications that had loved us sort of turned, turned against us. I remember particularly one one magazine in the UK, I won't mention his name, but it's quite, a, it's quite, a, it's quite, a, it's quite popular. Do you agree with me if I say that uh, in this new album you pick some of your best skills from the, the older stuff? I think we just picked our best skills, basically, you know, we, I think we felt like this album was kind of, a, had a sense of coming home, you know, we made it at Tim's studio, um, I think we went back to a lot of the instinctive ways of doing things that we'd done maybe with the first record in terms of how we prepared for it. Gave ourselves a, a long time to prepare and we did a lot of pre-production. Um, we worked very hard to, to create an atmosphere for the record. Um, so there were similarities in that respect. But sonically, yeah, I mean, I think we wanted to really um, magnify the, the sound of the voice and the piano um, and really kind of highlight how great the songs are. And in a way, that kind of simplicity probably is is more harks back more to the first album than any other album. Well, baby, I'm not